26 through 33 and Joshua 14, 6 through 14. Caleb's path was straight ahead with faith and spiritual vigor. He served with a godly momentum, continuing strong in his confidence in the Lord. Beloved, if your confidence is anywhere else but God, you will fail. But if your confidence is in the Lord, I'm here to tell you he will uphold you with the power of his righteous right hand and his grace shall be sufficient for you. It will. Hallelujah. He served with godly momentum. His confidence was in his God who had the character. This is what Caleb believed, that God had the character and power to keep his word. Whatever the passing of time, or the size of the challenge. Caleb, beloved, is an encouragement to all of us. He finished strong. He said it when he was an old, old man. He said, give me the mountain. Give it to me. You promised it to me. I'm taking it. I don't care how many natural years I am. I still have your strengths. Because you see, beloved, the passage of time did not change God. Caleb could not let his age change his faith or lessen his endeavor. And when I say age, I'm talking to young people too. Don't let anyone ever tell you you're too young. The Bible's very clear. Do not despise your youth. God can use you if you're two, three, four, five years old, 10, 12, 15 years old. The only, I don't live in the land of regret, but I've often wished I had known the Lord sooner than 33 years. I knew of him. I feared him in the wrong way. I feared him this way. But I never knew his love. I never knew his acceptance. I never knew what a great salvation laid ahead for me till I was 33 years old. I often wonder how my life would have changed. But the Lord spoke to me many years ago and said, don't go there. Because everything that happened to you that you may have regretted, you wish you hadn't done, was for my purpose. For the saving of many. I've been able to minister to literally hundreds of people in many countries with my testimony of how faithful God is. And if God can do what he's done for me, there's hope for you, believe me. Never, ever lose hope. So Caleb would not let age change him. It wouldn't lessen his endeavors. As the Lord promised, he said, here I am today, 85 years old. I'm just as strong and as vigorous to go out to battle as I was way back in my 40s. I wrote that and I said that in there. This is how you finish strong. Caleb chose to live, not accommodate the obstacles before him, but by the God who was inside of him. He refused to let life's tragedies, and they happen, beloved. We're all been there, and we're, many of us are there right now. But he refused to let that dictate his life. He refused. He said, no. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. As was the faith of all the Old Testament examples. So many of them. The Apostle Paul kept his eyes focused straight ahead. What did he say? He said, this one thing I do. One thing. He was not a multi-taxer. I don't know if I say that right or not, but you know what I'm talking about. He didn't go taxing here. No, one thing. This one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and straining towards that which is ahead, meaning that you have to put some effort into it. You've got to put some effort sometimes to get out of bed. You've got to put some effort into living another day. You've got to put some effort into putting a smile on your face. You've got, you, sometimes you've got to put some effort into encouraging others when you're the one that needs encouraged. Life is not easy, but with God, it's awesome. Because we know in whom we have believed. And we know that he is able to keep us unto that day. So this one thing Paul said, one thing. I'm forgetting which is behind and I'm pressing on 
towards the goal of the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Beloved, if I could say anything to you this morning, keep your eyes on the goal. Choose today to finish strong. I wrote this many years ago in my notes, in my Bible, and I wrote it in this too. If only, how many times have we ever heard that? If only this had happened. If, if only this hadn't have happened. If only I had been there. If only I hadn't let this happen. And it goes on and on. If only, if only, if only. Those must be the, the two saddest words in the world. If only. You can't stay there. You can't change a thing. You can't change a hair on your head. You can't change an inch of your stature. You have to leave some things in the mighty hand of God. Don't let those words be yours. If they are yours, change them. Go to God and say, Father, I've been saying if only too long. Now I'm going to say by your grace, I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to choose today to finish strong. I'm going to choose the good things in life. I'm going to choose to see the light and not the darkness. See, there's two of everything in life. Happiness, sadness, joy, grief, light, darkness, day, night. You can choose to see the sunrise or you can always be looking at the sunset and wondering, what's tomorrow going to bring? Yes, there's times we're there. What is tomorrow going to bring? But you can't stay there. You can't stay there. Live in a manner that dictates to a godly focus. Live in a way that commits to a worthwhile purpose. And live in a way that contributes to the well-being of others. At any age, young or old, Everyone has something to contribute that can be beneficial to others. To Timothy, his young protege, Paul assessed his own journey with anticipation. He took him aside one day and he spoke to him. And this is my transliteration. He sat him down. He said, son, you've got many years ahead of you. I've lived most of mine now. Listen to me. The time of my departure is at hand. The time is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Read it for yourself, beloved, in 2 Timothy 3, 4, 6 through 8. You should never take my word for it. You should always look up the scriptures, no matter who's in this pulpit. You need to read the scripture for yourself. Paul finished strong. That was the greatest words that he could say to his protege. He had taught him the way of the word, the word. He had taught him the ways of helping people. He had taught him the right way. And now he knew in his spirit it was time. And beloved, whether we want to face that reality or not, you may live till 110 years old, but the day will come when it's time. We don't look for that. We want to enjoy every single day and live it to the fullest. But Paul was simply saying what needed to be said. Finished strong. Finish strong, Timothy. You started off right. Finish strong. I can look over the last 40, probably longer years of my life now. And many, many people back in the day, as they say, in the 70s, God used many, many men and women to begin churches, as, as you well know. There was a move of God, of the Word of Faith churches. Let me tell you something. Some of them made it, and a lot of them didn't. But thank God for those that held on. Thank God for those that are still serving the Lord today. If the truth be known back then, we didn't know too much. I say it this way. We were like children playing out in the traffic. Thank God for the Holy Ghost and the ministering angels. But we learned Unfortunately, we learn through our mistakes most of the time in the school of hard knocks. 
And yes, as young pastors and young leaders, I'm sure we hurt people. I'm sure we did things that were wrong. I'm sure we made decisions that we shouldn't have made because out of ignorance more than anything else, because God says in his word, he doesn't look in the outward appearance. He doesn't look at all the things you're doing wrong. He looks at your heart. And so you grow and you grow and you grow in the Lord and you finish strong. Don't look back at what you could have been, should have been, might have been, all of these other things, it's not going to work. I've noticed one thing, if I'm looking back or turning back, I'm going to trip over my own feet. You're meant to walk forward. God knows all about it. Oh, hallelujah. So what a godly example for the young man, Timothy, the young minister, that now the great man of God was saying, it's up to you now, you've got the torch. You run with it. Anyone can start, beloved. We can all start strong. Only the determined will finish. Only when you determine in your heart, no matter what comes my way, Lord, I know you'll be there for me and I'm going to finish my course. But the one word I want to put in there, I want to finish my course with joy. I want to be joyful. I want to be able to say, no matter what I'm going through, and I can put a smile on my face. No matter what I'm going through, I can thank you, Jesus. There's always something you can thank God for. As I said last week, and I believe it, and I mean it, you can thank God you can see, you can thank God you can hear, you can thank God you can taste, you can thank God you can talk, you can thank God you can walk, you can thank God you can think, you can thank God that he gave you a heart that loves him. There's so much you can thank him for. Dwell in those things. Live life every day moving forward in faith and obedience. Going somewhere, accomplishing something, making a difference. Building, beloved, on successes. Benefiting from failures. Excelling today as you build for tomorrow hallelujah foolishly and frequently unrecognized some people squander their years they squander their energies they squander their life on careers and hobbies and I'm not against any of that praise God for careers praise God for hobbies praise God for recreation but remember what's important in life. Every one of us need, most of us need a career of some kind. We need jobs to survive. We thank God for the jobs that God gives us and the strength to be able to do. We like hobbies, of course we do. We, we have our recreation, that's what vacations are about. So that you can recreate recreation. You can recharge yourself again. There's nothing wrong with any of these things. But we can neglect our soul with the things of this world is all I'm saying. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. You see, the word righteous, beloved, has many continuations, but can I say to you what it really means? It means right standing with God. You're not righteous because of anything you can do. It's not anything you can think up. It's not how holy you can become. You are righteous because you're in right standing with God through the blood of Jesus. What does right standing mean? I'll bring it into modern day. You have an employee that doesn't know what time it is, doesn't know how to tell the time, in other words, they stay there hour after hour. The, the boss doesn't even know the overtime they even put in. But one day, that boss happens to walk into the office and see that person there, or happens to call them or whatever, and know they're on their computers. And all of a sudden, it dawns in that, that boss or that employer what a gem they have. And things start to change for that employee because... They have now found right standing with their employer. And there's people 
that are in right standing in their, their jobs, their offices, their factories, all these things. Don't think you're not being seen because you are. You're being watched. You're being watched as a Christian. But the greatest right standing you can have, thank God for right standing with your employer, your employees, your people that you work with, your family, your extended family, your church family. Thank God for all of that. But do you realize today, beloved, you are in right standing with God. When the enemy comes and accuses you before the great throne and the great judge of all judges, your advocate, your lawyer, Jesus Christ, is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he stands and he says, Father, they're mine. Case closed. They're covered with my blood. They're in right standing with you, the great judge of judges. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So the important thing to all of us today is to complete what God has told us to do with joy and accomplishment. What is all that about, you say, Pastor? There's nothing more important than this lifetime as your family, your friendships, and serving the Lord by serving others. Nothing. There's nothing more important. All the things in this world will pass away. You're taking nothing with you. But those wonderful memories, even when a loved one passes, you always, you know, death leaves a heartache no one can heal. Love leaves a memory no one can steal. There are certain things that you never forget. So stop trying to finish strong in your own strength. Seek first God's kingdom. As a child of God, know that it is your heavenly Father's pleasure to meet all your needs. Jesus himself tells us, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But God does not want you to seek after things. He wants you to seek first his kingdom. And when you do that, beloved, all these other things will be added unto you. So the first priority every day of your life is to seek his kingdom. The word first in the Greek is the Greek word proton, which means first in order of importance. Proton, first in order of importance, holding the highest place in all of our affections. God is first. Seek him first. Seek him last. Last thing at night, first thing in the morning. And during the night, your, your spirit never sleeps anyway. Many times you wake up during the night and your spirit is very much alive. You may have received a dream you're wondering about or a vision or something happened. You had a word of something during the night. That's your spirit, man. It never sleeps. Hallelujah. So hold the, to the very, very most precious thing First in order of importance, seeking God. The Bible tells us we are not to seek after things the way the Gentiles do. The word seek is the Greek word, word epivizilio, and it means to seek with all their might, with much sweat or with much stress. However, the way God wants us to seek is to seek first the kingdom. The Greek word is zetio which means to hunger, to desire, to worship. It is simply a hungering, a desiring for the kingdom of God without any labor or any toil. Any labor or any toil. That is the kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17. And it tells us that it is righteousness. What is righteousness? Another variation of righteousness is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Knowing 
that you are righteous. You have that peace and you have that joy and no one can take it from you. No one can buy it. No one can sell it. It's inside of you. And the kingdom of God dwells in you because the Holy Spirit indwells you. So the kingdom of God is his righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. If you want to have this peace and you want to have this joy, you want it flowing from you, then every day, beloved, it's so simple, we miss it. Every day, be conscious of your righteousness. Not sin consciousness, righteousness consciousness. We were all sinners. However, we were saved by grace. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that can never be reversed. Hallelujah. Not your own righteousness. Thank you, Father. Spend time with him and listen to his word. And when you do these things, beloved, you're seeking his kingdom and all these other things will be added unto you. You can fill in the blank. What do you need today? There are people here today who may need healing within the sound of my voice. You may need a, a, a employment. You may need your children to come back, back from the land that's too strong for them and the hand that's too strong for them. Hallelujah. These are scriptures you should be speaking over your children, your seed, seed, and seed. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered. God says he'll put his hand down and bring them out of the waters that are too strong. His hand is sufficient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we just read here in 1 Corinthians 9 that some run a race to win a wreath that will wither and die. But we Christians, we receive an eternal crown. And I'm going to be talking to you about crowns and then I'm going to close this out. You need to hear what's ahead. This life is a teeny wee margin. Eternity is forever. Forever. You see, beloved, failing doesn't mean you're a failure. It just means you have not yet succeeded. It doesn't mean I've accomplished nothing. It just means I've learned something. It doesn't mean I've been a fool. It just means I've had the courage to take a risk. It doesn't mean I'm inferior. It just means I'm not perfect. It doesn't mean I've wasted my time. It just means I have a reason to start over. It doesn't mean I should give up. It just means I have to try harder. It doesn't mean I'll never make it. It just means I need more patience. It doesn't mean God has abandoned me. It just means he has a better idea. Idea, a better idea. Choose today to finish strong. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 4, 8, and now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness. Beloved, your crown is awaiting you. Keep striving to, to, fill, to fulfill your purpose for which God has called you. Never lose sight of your final destination. Your final destination. Don't forget that there are eternal rewards and they're referred to as crowns. Among other things, we're going to be so blessed. They're set aside for you and I. Here are five of them that you can win according to the Bible. One, the imperishable crown for those who have daily bring their carnal nature under the Spirit's control. You've heard it, you've said it many times over yourself. The, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. Come on, we've all been there. 1 Corinthians 9, 25. The imperishable crown for those who bring their carnal nature under to the word. The second crown is the crown of exaltation for those who win souls to Christ. 
and help to build them up in him. 1 Thessalonians 2.19. The third crown is the crown of righteousness for those who, under, who order rather their steps and walk in the light of Christ's return. 2 Timothy 4.8. You see, the day's coming when he's returning. But we don't, we don't, we, we look for him. But the Bible also says, and to all you young people, hear me. Occupy till he comes. Don't we don't sit there and twiddle with thumbs. Are you coming today, Jesus? Are you coming? No, there's people that need to hear the good news before he comes. There's still a plan and a purpose or we wouldn't be here. There's still a generation that has to be raised up. To hear his voice. To hear his voice. And to do his word. A generation that will carry the blood-stained banner through every evil, demonic force that the enemy tries to put on this earth. And then in that day, in that day, if we're with him or still here, we're coming back to rule and to reign. We're not a bunch of sissies going to be sitting in some heart play, uh, some little cloud playing a harp. No. We are created in the image and likeness of Almighty God. And when he breathed into Adam, he breathed the breath of life. And when you were born again, you were born again into light and life and love and that breath again breathed into you and someday when we're all in heaven he's going to look and say okay guys it's time to go back and rule and reign Ooh, glory to am I the only one that's getting happy here am I the only one that's getting this can you help me hallelujah praise God crown of righteousness who those to walk in the light of Christ's return the fourth crown is the crown of life for those who overcome temptation because they've made Jesus Lord over every area of their lives, James 1.12. This is all in the Bible. These are real crowns. Fifth crown, the crown of glory. For those who have given their all to lead and feed and protect God's flock. First Peter 5, 1 through 4. What a scene. I want to paint you a picture. What a scene. All of God's servants, you and I, generations behind us and generations should the Lord tarry to come. You'll be with all of your loved ones. You'll be with people you don't even remember and you'll look at them and say, oh my goodness, I remember you now. Mm -hmm. What a scene. All of God's servants before his throne. Do you think for one moment, beloved, that they're all strutting around heaven displaying their crowns or they're competing for honor and recognition? I don't think so. That's all gone. No, the Bible tells us that we will bow down in worship and we will cast our crowns at his feet and we will give honor to the only one deserving of it. His name is Jesus. And your life will be so fulfilled. I can't even talk right now. Because we haven't even scratched the surface of what it's going to be like in eternity. But it's not just for them. God wants you living that way now. He wants you living in that light now. Knowing that no matter what, I know how this is turning out. I hear Christians saying, well, at the end we win. No, we won. We won. We won every fight on this earth. We will overcome. The Bible says we are more than overcomers through him who loved us. So, we'll cast our crowns at his feet. 
Live your life, beloved, every day in the light of that moment. In the light of that moment. And thank God for many years on this earth. Because he needs you here. He needs you here to fight the good fight of faith. There'll be plenty of time for the other life when it's your time. But my Bible tells me with long life, he will satisfy me. Now you can put in that long life anytime you want. You can say whatever years you, you're looking for. But I'm waiting until I'm satisfied and I'm nowhere ready to be satisfied. Are you hearing me today? Hallelujah. So what a scene. Stand on the word, beloved. That's your sure foundation. But as I close this, you will find, as I have, that as you grow in God, there's so much he will start to deal with you about. But beloved, be wise. When he speaks to you, obey God. And be in balance in all things. Balance in all things. Hallelujah. Well, I'm done. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I had a little funny story I was going to tell, but I decided it can wait till next week. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, I'm so grateful for your word today. I'm so grateful for your anointing today, Lord. Because it's your anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage. There's nothing I can do or say. It's your anointing on your word that cuts asunder the marrow and the bone. Lord, Thank you for your word. Thank you for the expectancy that we have of eternal life. But also thank you for the time that we can spend on this earth in good health. Because your word says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But you, Jesus, came that we might have life here and have it more abundantly. And Father, thank you for everyone within the sound of my voice. Whatever their need might be today, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name for health. I pray for peace. I pray for your grace to be sufficient for them. I pray, Lord God, that they will hear your voice clearly in the days and the months and the years to come. And I pray, Father, that with great joy they will finish their course and they will finish strong. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, as we're still seated for a few